I like bush meat. For my area, we prefer bush meat than all this uh, chicken and beef. Bush meat is a nice meat. I feel so bad if they banned bush meat. Bush meat. It can be anything from snakes to monkeys to crocodiles to pangolins to sea turtles. You name it. No wildlife is spared. And did you know that the hunting and selling of most endangered species is illegal in Nigeria? Therefore, the consumption is too. Oluo Fish Market, one of several wet markets across Nigeria. The hustle and bustle is much like any other market, although the Lagos State Ministry of Health has been attempting to shut it down, as what's on sale here is far from ordinary. But traders are often unwilling to acknowledge that their livelihood can pose a severe risk to health and the environment. For the safety of the salesman who spoke to us in this report, we've kept his identity anonymous. I sell pangolin and bushmeat, alligators, crocodile, grass cutters, and terrapin, and every kind of bushmeat. I've been selling this bushmeat for 30 years now, 40 years. I'm selling this bushmeat with my families. We are selling it together. And we left the old chief before we entered the new, new market. Human contact with wild animals increases the risk of zoonotic disease transmission. Outbreaks of diseases like Ebola and monkeypox have been linked to the bushmeat trade. COVID-19 too, potentially originating from wild animals, has shown the world just how serious this can be. The general consensus is that COVID did come out of the ecosystem through uh, handling of exotic species. And that way it got into the community and obviously um, became adapted to the human physiology and therefore able to cause sickness, but not just cause sickness, but be transmissible. So these animals that come out of the ecosystem, they harbor thousands and thousands of pathogens as part of how they exist. We as human beings, if we come into contact with these animals, just like if I handled a bat that had an Ebola virus on it or a Marburg virus, or rabies, I would get sick. One big driver of the bushmeat trade is poverty. For many living in rural communities, there are often limited dietary options. And for many sellers, the bushmeat trade is the only source of livelihood that they know. So there are alternative means of livelihood. And what you could do or what people do do is you turn a poacher into a protector or you turn a poacher into a breeder. Just like we, we have chickens in chicken farms, and we have cattle in ranches, and we have goats in goat farms, you know, before, these animals used to roam around in the wild, but now we've domesticated them. So you now turn a hunter or a poacher or a wet market uh, trader into a breeder of these species, if that's what they want to continue doing. In urban communities, bushmeat consumption is usually a matter of choice, driven by a number of factors from health to taste to culture. And there is also a huge international demand. We usually sell it for Chinese and Yoruba people. In one week, maybe you can sell like 10 or 15. And the people who ask us to bring it, they are going to sign it about and bring it for them. You know, there's a sudden you know, uptake of that product by expatriates, you know, people from Asia and places like that. To them, no matter what they pay here, it's still a cheaper, a cheaper, you know, um, opportunity for them because when they take it to their, to the countries where these uh, animals become very desirable, you know, people are prepared to pay, you know, a premium price for, for such uh, uh, proteins. Uh, der derived from uh, exotic species. And while there are laws that should protect our wildlife, like the Endangered Species Control of International Trade and Traffic Amendment Act 2016, these laws have barely been a deterrent. Any law about selling the pangolin, you did not hear any law about it. If the government call that you should not sell it, there's nothing will happen. 
But we are going to tell you that we are not to say this plan, this pangoli. You go and tell the hunter in the bush that they should not kill it. Because we are not the one that are killing it. It's the hunter that used to get it. Or they say we should not sell any bush meat at all. They will give us another work or they give us money to do another business. And the salesman is not alone. In January 2021, Wild Aid surveyed 2,000 Nigerians to find out what influences urban bushmeat consumption in the country. More than half of all consumers believe that all bushmeat is legal to buy. And 88% believe that some or all bushmeat should be legal to buy. This is concerning, considering the fact that Nigeria has one of the highest zoonotic disease rates in the world. What we've been doing in Lagos is to look at our laws. You can't charge somebody to court for hunting if hunting is not perceived or not a, an illegal activity or, or if it's not a controlled activity. So it's up to countries now to domesticate these international treaties and write them into law, domesticate them, and then you need to regulate them and you need to implement. We've been destroying our natural ecosystem. And when you destroy the natural ecosystem, you, you're literally removing the habitat where these endangered species naturally thrive. And that way, their numbers go down. But traders don't see how this is a problem. It cannot possible that we no longer pangolin in Nigeria because they used to get it in Pantana. They can miss in one pango, in one Pantana like this. They can miss it. They can miss me inside. It can never scarce in Nigeria. It can never scarce. About half a million tons of bushmeat are hunted in Nigeria every year, and the scale of hunting is far greater today than it's ever been. This is largely being driven by the illegal wildlife trade but also a growing urban demand for bushmeat. And here's a fact for you. More than half of all respondents to Wild Aid's survey on bushmeat consumption believe that there is less bushmeat available today than there was five years ago. If the hunting and consumption of bushmeat doesn't drastically reduce or come to an end, not only are we on track to lose the little wildlife that's left, but we could very possibly be the originating source of the next pandemic. A key concern for people who consume bushmeat in urban communities are chemicals mainly in imported meat produce. However, 98% of respondents to the survey did indicate that there are acceptable alternatives to these endangered species, like organic chicken and fish. If Nigeria can cut down on chicken and fish imports and increase the domestic production of these animals at a strong quality, while enforcing laws that protect endangered species, we can conserve and repopulate the wildlife that we have left. Leila Johnson Salami, Arise News.